Greetings and blessings, my sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ. My name is Glenn Shang, and I'm the pastor of Haleyville and Morristown United Methodist Churches in Commercial Township, New Jersey, part of Cumberland County in the southwestern part of the Garden State. We are continuing the series called Teach Us to Pray on the Lord's Prayer, and our core scripture passage uh, for this entire series is Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 13, right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew's chapter 5, 6, and 7, our passage, Matthew 6, verses 7 through 13, in the first book of the New Testament or the Greek Bible, when Jesus says, When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And then verse 9, he says, Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 13, a reading from God's holy word. Will you pray with me? And then we'll look at today's message. We thank you, O Lord, for your living, loving, holy, and precious word. Teach us, Lord, help us to be teachable. Bless us, O Lord. Allow us to bless you and bless others, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of this message is We Forgive. We forgive, and this is the fourth message uh, in the uh, Teach Us to Pray series on the Lord's Prayer. Now, can you recite the Lord's Prayer today? I'll give you a chance at the end of the message. We'll do it together. Did you learn it when you were a child growing up? If you have children, do they know the Lord's Prayer? Did you teach it to them or entrust their Christian education to Sunday school? You know, kind of like paying your taxes so the government can teach your kids? Those who complain at the loss of prayer in the public school often have lost prayer in the private home. A bit too heavy? Or am I striking a chord by getting too personal? All right, let's lighten things up just a little. Children often can memorize things very quickly. The key is how well do they learn the original? Uh, a little boy named Reese prays like this. Our Father, who does art in heaven, Harold is his name. There's a girl who prays today's verse. Forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets. And Kalen helps us with Next, the next message in the series on being tempted when she prays, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us some email. I think I'd like to be delivered from some email. Jesus tells us to love God with your heart, soul, and mind. He also says in the same breath to love your neighbor as yourself. Forgiveness is a lot like love. Sometimes it's easier to forgive those we love than loving enough to forgive ourselves. This is my history. This is my story. Before, and yes, even after, making Jesus my Lord, I have bouts of doubts. I loved God and helped my neighbor. Loving my neighbor comes with time. But I just didn't care much for myself. I liked me I just didn't love me. Forgiving myself took time and in many ways is still taking time. Self-esteem is an ongoing issue with me, but it used to be a battle. Transitioning from a battle to an issue is progress as far as I'm concerned. Forgiveness is one of those Sunday morning churchy words. We kind of sort of know what it means, but we kind of sort of don't know what it means. Know what I mean? To forgive is literally to let go of something, a sin, a wrong, 
and offense. You are sending away that hurt, that pain, that sin. Think of it as a boat you are casting off from the shore with the tide going out, except you are not on it. And if you want to get technical, legally technical, to forgive in Jesus' day is to divorce. I realize this is a touchy subject, but to ask God's forgiveness is to divorce yourself from that sin. And asking someone to forgive a sin involves seeking to be divorced from that harsh word or nasty deed. And while remarrying after divorce can happen, God does not want you to remarry that sin, that wrong, that offense. And what's this whole trespasses and debts stuff? Is it forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our debts or maybe forgive us our sins? Yes, yes, and yes to all three. Even though our text during this Teach Us to Pray series is from Matthew, the Gospel of Luke version uses forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Our traditional version of the Lord's Prayer draws from our Wesleyan Anglican heritage in the Methodist Church and uses uh, the word trespasses. This probably comes from Jesus' words right after the prayer when he says in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, right after our passage I read earlier. You know the word trespass? It literally is a false step. A false step. Walking where you're not supposed to be walking. Do I really need to draw you a picture? Okay, 2008, Clint Eastwood, the movie Gran Torino. Get off my lawn. Clear enough? So we have looked at forgive us our sins and forgive us our trespasses. What about the actual text from Matthew chapter 6, verse 12? Jesus says, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6, verse 12, the words of our Lord Jesus. You know what a debt is. Usually, the richer you are, the more debt you take on. That's in our 21st century culture. In Jesus' day, it is often the poor who incur debt just so their family can survive. But yes, to the Jew, this verse has a financial purpose. Jewish teaching uses the same Greek or Aramaic word, the local word of that day and age in that area. We use both that word for both sin against God and debt against man. According to the law, the Jewish law, there is to be forgiveness of monetary debt every seventh and fiftieth years. Every seventh and fiftieth years. The shrewd lawyers of the day find ways to get around this law. So this may be why Jesus adds this to the prayer. But while we understand the importance of forgiving a bill that is owed here in Matthew, Jesus is trying to use this graphic illustration from a moral standpoint, emphasizing how important, how essential, how vital it is to seek God's forgiveness, while at the same time forgiving others who have wronged us. It's all about mercy. As we approach God to be set free, he calls us to set free one another. God does indeed let us go from the sins that should disqualify us from a relationship with him. God's forgiveness mends that broken fellowship that we do not deserve. He calls us to do the same. Listen again to those words from Jesus right after the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. If you forgive others their trespasses or their debts or their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses or your debts or your sins. 
Jesus' words in Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. It sounds tough, doesn't it? No, it sounds just. This sentence fits my logical mind perfectly. Why should God set me free from my sin if I keep someone else locked up in theirs? But, 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 no, no, no. If you want God's forgiveness, then you do it on his terms, not yours. Our sin should lock us up for all eternity. It is only by the sacrificial mercy of Jesus that frees us from sin's prison. And at the same time that Jesus releases you, he hands you a key so you can open the cell door of that fellow convict who has hurt you. Kind of a graphic illustration. Well, this only skims the surface when you're talking about the marvelous, wonderful, unmatchable grace and love of God. I will leave you with a quote from a super duper best selling amazing author and Jesus follower Max Lucado. Apple trees bear apples. Wheat stalks produce wheat. Forgiven people forgive people. God has called on me to simplify my life, starting with simplifying this message. It doesn't get any simpler than this. Forgiven people do forgive people. Amen. Will you join with me in the Lord's Prayer? The words will be there on the screen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, always a blessing to share God's with you, God's word with you. I encourage you to continue praying and continue living for him and go in peace. And may God of peace go with you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen.